Happy Lord's Day, everyone. Glad to have you out in our journey through the unvarnished Jesus. Today is day 12. The subject matter is the transfiguration of Jesus. It's a subject I'll be talking a little bit more about at our in-person 11 o'clock service at First Christian Church, if you'd like to come out and join us. We are reading today from Matthew chapter 17, beginning in verse 1 through verse 9. It says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So we'll stop right there. What is with the transfiguration? You know, the transfiguration is a high mark in the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked his disciples a question, who do men say that I am? And several of them came up with different explanations, but it was Peter that spoke up. And he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And P uh, Peter is told at that point by Jesus that he has the keys to the kingdom. And that upon this rock, I will build my church. In this high mark of Jesus' public ministry, what we find is an unusual event. What difference does it make in the course of events that Jesus is transfigured before his disciples? What is the purpose of it? Well, I think the transfiguration answers a question of how God ultimately reveals himself. You see, to establish the finality of God's big reveal of who he is and what he is like is answered in Jesus. You see, the transfiguration brings the prominent personalities of Moses and Elijah together with Jesus to make a point. The revelation of Jesus as greater than the law, Moses, and the prophets, Elijah, is substantiated in a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Now, we have heard that before at the baptism of Jesus. Now, Simon Peter misses the point. He wants to build three shrines, making all three personalities equal. Jesus is not on par, though, with Moses and Elijah. He is their successor. He is their superior. And this event, the transfiguration of Jesus, does what the author of Hebrews takes a whole book to explain. And that is, Jesus is greater than the law and the prophets. Jesus is greater than the Mosaic Covenant. Jesus is greater than even the greatest of the prophets. Because Jesus is God's word. Often we call the Bible the word of God. Eh, that's a little bit misleading. The Bible is the witness to the word of God, who is Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are the perfect revelation of what God is like. May we learn to see our lives in the light of his life. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.